Okay, so now we can put the, uh, the floors in. Uh, and so you have the, um, the two interior floors, uh, as well as the balcony um, and the, the floor of the, uh, for the landing that's um, at the entry there. So we can put all of those floors in using just the levels that, we, that we've made. Uh, and so you can see here that the, the bottom floor is on the ground floor level, not ground. And you could, just to make it clear, if you want to change ground to ground line, if you, um, if you think that's going to be confusing, calling it ground. Um, because that's what, it's, that's what it's called here. But I'll just leave it as, I'll leave it as ground now. When we put a, um, a ground surface in, maybe I will change it to ground line. But what I'm going to do now is just open up ground floor in the floor plans. And then click on the floor button in, on, on the architecture tab. You can see you have that floor tool. You're not given a floor thickness. So I'm just going to leave it with the generic 150mm floor for now. It should begin on pick wall, so you shouldn't need to change the option in the draw panel. So what you should be able to do then is just hover over the interior face of one of those walls and then press tab once you see that it's highlighted the wall and it should chain and let you then click after that, so you need to click when you see all the walls highlighted and it will give you a chain of those walls, in other words it will highlight all or select all of them and create a boundary around the entire inner face and that's going to create the floor for you, so tick to finish and you've made the ground floor floor sorry, sorry. Yep. yep, tick, and I'm going to do exactly the same thing if you missed it on the next level so if you've done it, when it asks you this question, just say yes to, overlock, uh, to, hi to, um, to cut the overlapping volume out of the walls, basically. On the inner face of the wall. So I'll do it again. In, in level one, you need to do the same thing. So I'm going to open up level one by double clicking. And then again, I'll click on the floor tool. And then you should be able to just hover over the interface. It should highlight the whole wall, but you need to have your cursor on the inside edge of the wall. Then press tab, and it should highlight all of the walls. And click afterwards. And that's the part that trips most people up, because it's instinctive to just go and click before you press tab. So you need to press tab first, then click to select. Then tick to finish, that's it. Yes, that's right, yeah. And whenever you see that question, pretty much you should just say yes to it. So those are the two main floors done. And if you look in your section view, section one, you should see them there being cut. And one nice option there, I think, would be to make that floor show the same way as the, as the walls because it's existing, so we can make it show black in the section, just like the walls are. And so I'm going to select... Oh, I've gone to my section. Yep. So I can now select that floor. Oh, the floor, doesn't matter which one, the top or the bottom. Oh, okay, I'll have a look at it. So it's going to select one of the floors, doesn't matter which one. Go to edit type. And then, it's unusual, with this one, it's already got the coarse scale fill colour set to black, but there's no coarse scale fill pattern this time. So you just need to click there, where it says coarse scale, coarse scale fill pattern, next to that, and a browse button will come up, the button with the dots on it. And then you can scroll down in that list to find solid fill. Okay. So now it's like the wall. If I click OK, you'll see both of them go black. So that's a really nice way of showing existing elements in, um, in your projects without using phases.
Sorry? Oh, okay. I'll, have, I'll come down a look. So, uh, <coughs> so I'll just quickly show you the next part with the with the uh, other floors, and then I'll give you some time to sort it all out. So, from what I remember, you don't have very clear dimensions for the landing. Oh, yes, there are. Okay, here we are. So, eight hundred. And oh, it's the dimension going the other way that is not clear, I think. Yeah. Right, so... Yeah, from what I can tell, you don't have... separate dimensions for the land, but you've got the dimensions for the stair there, and then the landing, that's right. Okay, so I'm just going to put that together, and then we have the height. Ah, there it is. Okay, so I'll just go ahead and draw the um, the landings in, and I'll give you time to, to check the heights for those, because I'll take a bit longer. But just to give you the basic method, I've gone into the level one floor plan, and I'm going to click the floor tool again, and then, so that I don't need to make an extra level for this landing, I'm going to type in a measurement, and uh, actually, so that's not the landing step, it's, uh, it's something else. So, so in, yeah, you're not given a dimension, but let's just assume for now that it's the same as the, uh, the step there of the, um, it's really the stringer or the, um, the side of the stair. So you've got a dimension there that goes to the top of that, but you're not giving a given a dimension from there down to the, yeah, but, and I think in reality it's probably more than you'd be allowed to do anyway nowadays. Looks like it's more than 190, which is the maximum uh, step you can have at the threshold. But uh, let's just say it's 150, because that'll make it easier to work with, even though, well, definitely more than that. Now let's say 190, let's just say it's the maximum. These steps are actually, I know, having done this before, they're more than 190. And so you'll need to make them that size, because that's the size they are in real life. But uh, that could create issues as well. Anyhow, for now, we'll just do the threshold and make that 190. So in the floor properties, you'll see you've got this option to set height offset from level. And I'm going to make that minus 190. So this is the floor for the landing. So I'm going to then go into the draw panel and use the rectangle tool to draw this floor shape. Yeah, you can just—it should be on boundary line already. So then you can just yeah choose rectangle. Yeah. And so I'm just going to draw it roughly to begin with. So I'm going to start on the inside corner of the wall there, we know that the landing needs to go to that corner. And I'm going to come down to the left and just roughly draw the shape of that or the size of that rectangle. So I'm not going to try and line it up with anything. I'm going to draw it so that it's either too big or too small. Doesn't matter, which, whichever way. Yep, as long as it's, uh, it's, it's actually better if it doesn't line up with anything. Yep, that's right. So now I'm going to press escape twice so that I can select one of those lines. And 
and the reason we have to do it like that is because you've got to then have a look at these drawings to work out those dimensions, and they're spread over a few different uh, a few different drawings. So you've got here the width of the stair plus the um, the stringer. So it's going to be uh, 1060 plus 200, so 1260. And so I'm going to select the bottom line there, and I can just then type in that measurement, 1260. And it should end up just slightly above the bottom edge of that wall. And then the next measurement is on the subsequent drawing, and it's 800 uh, from the face of that wall. So I'm going to select the line there, and then again I can just change that dimension above to 800. And again it's just slightly in from the edge of the wall. That's it, tick's finish. And so then you should be able to look in 3D, or if you're lucky, your section view and see that that floor is set down below the main floor. It should be automatically. Oh my yeah, yeah. What was the uh, 800. So I'll I'll draw the next one a bit more quickly, and I'll give you I'll maybe let you try and work out um, the measurements from the drawing. So I'm just going to go and draw it in using the rectangle tool. Notice it keeps the same height offset in the floor property, so you shouldn't need to type that in again. So same basic method, just drawing in the rough shape first, and then selecting each line to put in. Uh, level one again. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. That was, yeah. But you can always change the floor in properties afterwards to level one, so I'll show you how to do that in a second. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I just clicked anywhere on the edge of the wall. Yeah. So, it's a bit unclear there, but yeah, 1270. It's done. Uh, twelve seventy by eleven fifty, but then it's two fifteen from the edge of the um, from the boundary as well. So you need to do that first, the two fifteen, to get the first edge set oh. out from the boundary, and then the twelve seventy. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, do so, so if you select that line at the top, yeah. and then you can put in that measurement, oh. and then select it at the bottom. Yeah, put in the twelve seventy. 